SpaceX's ambition with the Starship booster is crystal clear, landing the booster on Mechazilla's chopstick. This is also their ambitious goal for Flight 5. But is there another way? Well, in recent Starship launch proposals to the FAA, SpaceX surprisingly revealed the possibility of landing the booster on a drone ship, a method already famous with the Falcon 9. Interesting, right? But the point is, Starship isn't Falcon 9. So, how will the booster land, and what will SpaceX need to do to ensure a safe touchdown for this giant? Let's find out in today's episode. SpaceX is undertaking an ambitious project, constructing a launch tower for Starship at LC-39A. This site, renowned for its Falcon 9 launches, is about to host the debut of the most powerful rocket ever built. Such a colossal project requires meticulous planning and necessary permits. Consequently, SpaceX has submitted detailed operational plans to the FAA for rigorous environmental review concerning the launch and landing of both Starship and Super Heavy. Let's explore the three landing options SpaceX has proposed. The first one is landing on chopsticks, a familiar concept to every space fan. The second one is drone ship landings. With this method, the rocket would land on a floating platform in the ocean. And the last one, controlled ocean landing. This destructive scenario involves intentionally landing the rocket in the ocean, a method that was successfully tested during Starship's fourth flight. It seems like this method is less favored compared to the others. We've talked a lot about booster catches and sea landings, but drone ship landings with Starship are a very new approach. Is one of SpaceX's most monumental technological achievements. SpaceX has mastered this technique with the Falcon 9. This method allows the Falcon 9 to carry heavier payloads and deliver them straight to geostationary transfer orbit, GTO, all while keeping reusability at the forefront with minimal maintenance between flights. Back in December 2015, SpaceX hit a major milestone by successfully landing the Falcon 9 for the first time at Kennedy Space Center. And just four months later, they nailed their first perfect landing on a drone ship. This was a massive leap forward in rocket technology. By June 2021, the Falcon 9's first stage had landed successfully on Just Read the Instructions for the 250th time. It's an impressive number. Super heavy booster landing on a drone ship. Sounds strikingly similar to the Falcon 9, doesn't it? Yes, in this scenario, the landing procedure for Starship will share many outstanding similarities with the Falcon 9. Picture this breathtaking scene. After a successful launch, the Super Heavy booster gracefully detaches and begins its journey back to Earth. This journey involves a series of intricate yet precise maneuvers akin to landing on the Mechazilla chopsticks. The first stage re-enters the atmosphere at a specific angle to shield its structure from scorching temperatures. You might have seen this during Flight 4, where the booster didn't fall straight down, but rather tilted at about 30 degrees. Meanwhile, the grid fins deploy like the hands of a maestro, adjusting every movement to ensure a soft and accurate landing. During this landing process, the engine systems and grid fins must operate flawlessly or else the booster will end up in the ocean. This moment promises to be nothing short of spectacular. Why can we say that? The SpaceX Falcon 9 stands at an impressive 70 meters from the base to the tip of its nose fairing. In comparison, the booster segment of the Starship alone stands at a towering 71 meters, not to mention the Starship's diameter of 9 meters, 2.5 times that of the Falcon 9. Can you see the difference? In the history of space exploration, nothing as massive and heavy as Starship has ever attempted such a dramatic landing on a drone ship. However, being the largest object to land on a drone ship poses numerous technical challenges. First, its impressive diameter diameter demands a sturdy platform, a stage large enough to ensure the stability of this towering cylindrical structure as it returns from space missions. The drone ship must be capable of withstanding the significant impact force when the booster lands. I know some might worry that the dry mass of the booster, over 200 tons, eight times heavier than the first stage of the Falcon 9, presents a huge challenge for landing. But we don't have to worry about it. This isn't an issue when we consider the massive capacity of the Marmac series drone ship currently used by SpaceX, which can handle payloads up to 12,000 tons. This incredible lifting capability truly opens up a world of possibilities. However, you need to understand that the current design of Starship is meant for landing on chopsticks, not on a drone ship, which means it doesn't have landing legs. A tall, slender booster would require a robust Robust landing mechanism to handle the ocean's wave movements and remain stable against strong wind surfaces. To address this, one option is to equip it with landing legs like the Falcon 9. However, adding landing legs could complicate the booster structure and consume 20 tons of Starship's payload, thereby reducing the payload capacity to space and increasing the required fuel. Quite inconvenient, isn't it? Moreover, maritime assets are slow and logistically complex for the rocket turnaround time. 
Currently, SpaceX's drone ships in Florida are accompanied by recovery ships to assist and also to recover the fairings. These ships are named Bob and Doug after the two astronauts who flew on the first Crew Dragon flight to the International Space Station in 2020. The latest drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas, has thrusters on board to move it to the recovery position and back, but SpaceX hasn't utilized this capability yet. Consequently, the drone ships need to be towed. However, since Bob and Doug are also tasked with fairing recovery, they need to be positioned slightly differently than the drone ship. This often means they stay out at sea for more than one mission. Currently, it can take up to four to five days to deploy a drone ship, recover the rocket, and bring it back to port, assuming there are no launch delays. Therefore, SpaceX needs to expand its network of drone ships and new recovery ships to support its ambitious goals and shorter turnaround times. Finally, weather is always a factor. If it's not safe for the drone ship and support ships to go out, the flight has to be postponed. Even under acceptable conditions, weather can increase the time it takes to reach the landing position or return to port. With all these challenges in mind, do you think SpaceX will design a booster with landing legs? Comment below. Or we might have another option. SpaceX could utilize more robust floating sea-based launch platforms, something akin to an oil rig. Maybe you didn't know this, but four years ago, Elon Musk revealed on X that they aim to build floating, super-heavy class spaceports for Mars, the Moon, and hypersonic travel around Earth. Just a month later, this vision began to take shape when SpaceX bought two deep-sea oil rigs and named them Phobos and Deimos, after Mars moons, with plans to convert them into offshore launch platforms for Starship. These oil rigs were purchased by Lone Star Mineral Development LLC, according to public records. Lone Star Mineral Development was established in June 2020 and is registered under SpaceX's CFO, Brett Johnson. However, they eventually sold them because they weren't suitable as launch platforms, and the company needed to start launching Starship and gain a better understanding of the vehicle before building offshore platform. Nonetheless, Wynne Shotwell mentioned to reporters after her presentation at the FAA Commercial Space Transportation Conference on February 8, 2023, that constructing sea-based launch platforms remains part of SpaceX's long-term plan for Starship development. They are aiming for dozens of launches per day, so they also plan to build floating launch platforms that can withstand a crazy frequency of launches. We'll have many pads. I think we'll have a lot of sea-based platforms as well. We have to see how this ship goes. In fact, SpaceX has always left the door open for Starship to land on an offshore platform. This isn't a new idea. From the very early days of the Starship program, SpaceX and even the military have seen the enormous potential in the point-to-point -point transport capabilities of this spacecraft. Imagine Starship swiftly transporting cargo, and even people, to any point on the globe in unimaginably short times. This represents a gold mine of business potential for SpaceX, and it also has tremendous military applications, helping the armed forces tackle transportation challenges that even the most advanced ships or airplanes can't handle. Todd Harrison, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, has even higher expectations for Starship. Do you know what he said? I want to see them start testing and, in a few years, maybe land something like Starship on a military ship in the middle of the ocean. This would be a form of at-sea resupply for extremely time-sensitive cargo. And this isn't a joke. The U.S. Air Force has awarded SpaceX a $102 million contract to demonstrate point-to-point -point space transportation technologies. This is a massive investment, highlighting the enormous potential of this technology. How do you envision SpaceX implementing its plan to land Starship on an ocean platform in the future? Personally, I think it's highly likely that once SpaceX refines and perfects Starship, they will initially land it on drone ships. Eventually, as they gain more experience, they will build advanced offshore launch and landing platforms. Imagine catching towers rising from these platforms. This approach will significantly reduce downtime between flights and pave the way for continuous Starship operation, a revolutionary new approach compared to the current Falcon 9 process. Currently, SpaceX doesn't seem to prioritize landing the Starship system on an offshore platform. Why? You see, it's incredibly complex and demands a ton of time to upgrade Starship's tech and prep the necessary infrastructure. This ain't no walk in the park. Get this, landing on a platform in the middle of the ocean is a whole new level of tricky compared to touching down on a structure on land. We're talking top-notch precision, stability, and coordination. So, first things first, the booster needs to absolutely nail its landing game on land. It has to survive safely and flawlessly in Flight 5. During the landing process, its engines need to work in perfect harmony. They've got to fire up fully and continuously, generating enough lift to slow the booster down and let it hover for a hot second before landing the immediate goal the booster needs to achieve. Once it proves it can return to land perfectly, the day we witness it landing on a structure out at sea won't be far off. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, 
please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.